Okay, this is probably the most important video and outline for your IA because this will account for 14 of the 25 marks through the way in which you present, right, your material and your findings and the techniques that you use and the way in which you analyze. So it's not about just describing. So I'm giving you here a very brief layout and some ideas as to what you can do. Okay, so for me, the very first thing I would do is I would look at your average data for each site. Now again, what I suggest you do when you make up some tables in Excel is you might want to look at the average data overall and then the average data for the evening and then the average data for the two daytime um, recordings that you took. And as I said, an overall. Okay, what I don't want is all of your data in this table. So you can do a really short summary here and put this here for each of your respective sites. Now this is a historical river one, so it won't really work for this, okay? So on a small table here, so site one through to site eight, maybe the average um, traffic count in a two minute period, the average wind speed, the building height, that's not gonna be an average, that's not gonna change, okay? The surface color isn't gonna change, etc. cetera, all right? So a small table here, then what I want to do is, this is a layout for just one hypothesis. So hypothetically, I say that the further away from the CBD, the lower the temperature. What I suggest you do is start off with a Spearman's rank calculation for that. Now this is not for that, this is hypothetically, and this was a river study historically. All right, so what you can do here, I've given you some hypothetical fake data. I'm going to pretend that the relationship the coefficient was 0 0.905 here, and it's a negative. So it's really close to 1. So when it's really, really close to 1, you have to do and insert a significance table and do a significance test here. Okay, now I've put this into your folder already, so you can get a copy of this. You'll need to go and source it yourself, though, right? So you need to source it properly. You created this, so this could be student-generated. The information on how to do Spearman's rank is also, if you've forgotten, um, in the folder as well. So you need to go through. You should have done this already in class as you've worked through um, various things. Okay, so here's my hypothetical scatter graph. And this is what I showed you in the previous video, and I told you not to put in the line of best fit, right? Now, if I go back and I have a look at this, and it's a negative, and it's close to 1, it means that I can put in a negative line of best fit. So what I need to do now is go back to my Excel, or I can just put this into draw and I can put a line of best fit. Then I need to circle my anomalies here. Okay, now down here, I'll show you what it's like. So this is completely different. Student here has made reference to the anomaly here. If you circle it, you should identify it. So site six and why it's an anomaly. So you might say, the average traffic or the average wind speed here. Okay, so be creative. Make sure you make reference to your anomalies here as well. All right, now this is how I suggest you start writing it up. And I'm just giving you the basics because you need to go ahead and you need to do this. So the first thing I should make reference to is the Spearman's rank coefficient. So negative 0.905 shows a strong negative correlation. Okay, so I'm describing it between Temperature, and that's the average temperature and distance from iron. All right, then I make reference to the significance test. If it's something like 0 0.001, I don't need to do a significance test because I'm going to reject the hypotheses anyway. All right, so there's a 1% chance here of there being an error. Then I make reference to the fact that a line of best fit can be drawn. So I'm going to say on the scatter graph, refer to the scatter graph, figure blah, 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 right? a line of best fit is shown. Then I need to go and explain. I'm not just describing, I need to explain. I don't need to explain all eight sites, but I should go, okay, for example, iron has the highest average temperature of blah, blah, blah. So what do you This can be explained by, might have the tallest buildings, which trap heat, they might be dark, might be the greatest average volume of traffic. The data needs to be in there. Then if I took photos, I can say also, for example, it had eight traffic lanes, the most lanes, which helped or led to the greatest volume of traffic. Then I can make reference to the fact that all roads go into the CBD, for example. Okay, so I can also then go to Bedock Jetty. It has the lowest average temperature at whatever. Then I can say why this could be attributed to the fact that there are no cars in the area. It's full of 
vegetation, there might have been shade, which lowers the average temperature. Now I say refer to whatever figure because I should have an annotated photo. Now an annotated photo you put in it and it could look something like this, right? Student source, you might have taken that photo and you annotate it. So yours would be large trees, vegetation, providing shade, no vehicles, no cars in this area here, for example, right? So you need to, this is just getting you started, you need a lot more than this. So I might say an anomaly exists at site six, it has one of the highest average temperatures, I state what it is, then I need to explain the anomaly, right? So I might say it has the highest average vehicles in a two minute period. Well, if it does, what are those vehicles? So I need to go back to the data that has been collected, right? All your answers are in the data that has been collected, so you must keep referring back. The average wind speed overall might be quite low, well, you might say it was low overall, however, uh, in the afternoon it was zero, right? So you don't just go over all average, what else dragged that average low? Was it your afternoon reading or your evening reading, etc. right? So this is how to start, okay? So I'm saying here that this is how to start. There's a lot more that you could say, and there are a lot of things that you can do, but this needs to be your work, right? Now, what you could do is you could also break this down. You could do it during the day, so I could do a scatter graph during the day for the average, right? And a scatter graph for the evening, for the average, and a Spearman's rank for the day and the evening, right? Now, once I've done that, I showed you above, I have to describe and I have to explain my findings. Now, I'm also going to say, be creative as how you visually show, right? Now, this is your work. You need to be creative. Your techniques need to be appropriate. So I'm showing you down here, for example, uh, if I talk about being creative, okay, I could use different types of graphs on, so this was a river study, and the students have put the cross sections on the graph. So what I could do is I put graphs on a map. This could be temperature, this could be number of cars, okay, it could be in the form of a pictogram, for example, right, on this, okay, so it should be visual, but it should be creative, okay, so it should be something that is different. So I'm giving you the basics and some different ideas here. You need to add in photos to help explain and you annotate. So you've got figures, we can call them image one, image two, image three, then you need to refer to them. If they're not referred to, you won't, or you'll struggle, you won't be able to get the six out of six. Okay, so don't just put in a photo and leave it, right? You can put a photo around the scatter graph. And that's what I suggest you do. If you've got a, something like this, and you've got an anomaly here, I would actually put a photo next to it because that might help you explain the anomaly, all right? So that's what I would do there if, you, if a photo helps. If it's wind speed, then that's quite difficult, right? So add data all the time, things like graphs on maps, make things visual and personalize your work here, all right? So as I said, to help you get started, I've given you a sample, right? I would write around about three, 400 words for each hypothesis. If you've done three hypotheses, then you're allowed around about 400 words. So 1,200 words pretty much um, overall for your written analysis, right? So I think you've got more than enough to get started here.